Welcome to this SimScale tutorial on the modeling of turbulence within the platform. First off, what is turbulence? Turbulence is typically recognized as chaotic flow. Within this flow, it is highly unsteady. We have the presence of many swirls, vortices, uh, and which we call eddies, in fact. And this results in a very diffu diffuse flow. It increases the amount of mixing that we have. It increases the heat transfer, for example. It's a highly dissipative process. Typically, what we observe in a turbulent flow is that we have these larger eddies, and there is an energy cascade, meaning most of the energy of the turbulence is contained within these larger swirls, but they break down into smaller and smaller swirls uh, or eddies, and we lose that energy as we go along. And this process it typically will occur at higher flow speeds. Most industrial flows are turbulent. And so typically what we observe in the platform is that most simulations will include some form of turbulence model. As I mentioned, turbulence increases with flow rate. At, as the flow rate increases, the amount of vibrations and chaos in the fluid or in the flow increases until we transition from what is a laminar state in which flow is very orderly and you can clearly define it in layers to what we call the turbulent state. Acting against the flow rate or the turbulence, we have viscosity. As a fluid's viscosity increases, think honey compared to water, the turbulence tends to decrease. This is because viscosity acts as a resistance to shear stresses, and that resistance adds order to the flow. In order to measure turbulence, we typically rely on the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is the ratio of convective to diffusive forces. It's defined as the density of the fluid times the velocity times some length scale of the fluid flow divided by the viscosity. As we approach higher Reynolds numbers, for example, in a pipe, typically within the range of 2,000 to 4,000, we transition from the laminar flow regime into the turbulent flow regime. Now, taking a deeper look at turbulence, as flow is introduced, it introduces energy to the system. Typically, this results in chaotic energy in swirls or eddies, as I mentioned. But as those swirls tumble through the system, they typically break down into smaller and smaller eddies until we reach some level where the eddies are so small that they actually dissipate directly into thermal energy. And this is what we call the Kolmogorov scale. Furthermore, at the top of the energy cascade, the larger eddies are very geometry dependent. But as we become smaller and smaller in our eddy size, typically the eddies become more isotropic, meaning they have no preferred direction. What is the influence of turbulence on a simulation though? Typically what occurs is that turbulence ex shows a very large scale of features. We have very minute eddies, as I mentioned, down to the Kolmogorov scale, all the way up to length scales that are on the order of magnitude of our object or our simulation. So if it's flow around a car, we might see the length of the car as our characteristic length, right? In order to capture all of this, we need a very small mesh to capture the small details spread over a very large area. So, it's typically believed that the Navier-Stokes equations, which are the base equations that govern fluid flow, are sufficient to capture turbulence. But, in order to do so, our mesh size and the expense of the simulation would be so great that it is typically not regarded as feasible. So, what we do instead is we model this turbulence. And there are a variety of different approaches. So what are the different turbulence models that we can use in a simulation? There are two main schools of turbulence model. 
the first off would be your Rand's family of models, standing for Reynolds Average Navier Stokes. And the second subset would be the LES family, or the Large Eddy Simulation. The Reynolds Average Navier Stokes is typically the industry standard, and it is based on averaging the Navier Stokes equations. The main assumption that occurs is that all the flow parameters, the velocity, the pressure, is centered around some mean value, and then we have turbulent fluctuations around it, which either throw it up, throw it down. For most important phenomena, like lift and drag, um, typically only the mean value is of interest, because they are the overall effect is smoothened out over time. For other things like heat transfer, noise prediction, we need to have an idea of the magnitude of these turbulent fluctuations because they have this additional effect of bringing in extra heat transfer or added diffusion of, of our momentum or of our heat of whatever physical property that it may be. So, as I mentioned, rather than simulate both the mean value and the turbulent fluctuation, the main approach in the Rand's family is to say we only track the mean value of our flow, but these added fluctuations, we will consider them to be an additional viscosity, an additional diffusive flux that will spread out the heat or the momentum, whatever it may be, through the simulation. And this turbulent uh, viscosity or, or thermal conductivity, whatever it may be, is modeled by our turbulence model. Typically, we track two equations uh, or two scalars, the turbulent kinetic energy, denoted as K, uh, and some uh, form of destruction of that energy, whether it is omega or epsilon. And we can now add two new equations to our overall solution. And rather than having to solve all the additional chaos, we can just solve for the average properties. Note that this, of course, does introduce some error into our simulation, as it is a simplification. Um, but typically, under the right circumstances, it is quite minimal. The other main family of turbulence models, being the large eddy simulation, uses the base principles of turbulence. As I mentioned, we have this energy cascade where most of the energy is introduced and, and contained within these larger eddies, and it breaks down into smaller and smaller eddies. Furthermore, typically only the larger eddies are dependent on the overall geometry or, or flow pattern, while as we get smaller and smaller, they become more and more isotropic. So what the LES family does is it captures those larger eddies explicitly via our simulation, and anything that falls under our mesh size, meaning we cannot capture it, then it is simplified by some submodel. Could be a RAND submodel, could be, um, there's a variety available. Typically, though, the industry standard is the RAND's turbulence family. This is due to a variety of factors, namely, LES is more expensive, it is limited to transient simulations, and it's only appropriate in certain external flows. So, what are the different properties that we observe with the RANS turbulent uh, model? As I mentioned, we track typically two scalar fields. Uh, these are mentioned as two equation models. So we track our turbulent kinetic energy, K, which is a measure of how chaotic the flow is at any point, and our turbulent destruction, uh, which is either epsilon or omega. And this is basically just the rate at which K is being destroyed. So both these fields are transported with the flow, and they are created and dissipated by certain flow features, namely any shear stresses that we observe. This means that we have to add two additional equations into our overall solution uh, to solve. Within the RANS family, there are two main models that we like to look at, the KLF epsilon set of models and the K omega set of models. K epsilon is typically more robust, uh, solves 
more easily, but at the cost of accuracy, particularly in phenomena that involve uh, the wall. So things like heat transfer, flow separation, uh, swirling or rotating flows. On the other hand, K omega is less robust, but due to its wall formulation, is more accurate in wall-dependent phenomena. Again, heat transfer, uh, flow separation. But this also makes it more expensive because typically we need a high resolution mesh as we approach that wall. Then we have the K omega SST model, which is a hybrid of the two. Essentially, we combine best of both worlds. We take the K epsilon in the bulk of the flow away from all the walls, and we use the K omega as we approach the wall instead. And how can we put all this into practice in our simulation? Once you've set up your simulation and chosen your simulation type, you can be able to select on the simulation type or name, uh, here I've named it incompressible, and select your turbulence model. We have two from the LES family available, laminar flow, of course, and the RANS family that I was mentioning. Our default is the K omega SST, and I typically re recommend that for most flows. If you have any interest in the LES, uh, or the different turbulence models, please take a look at our website and scrim through our documentation where we'll give you a deeper dive on the strengths and weaknesses of each. The other question to contend with when dealing with turbulence is how to handle turbulence at the wall. In order to demonstrate this, I've created a quick wall boundary condition, which you can see more about in our boundary conditions tutorial. And you'll see here I have a turbulence wall field. We have two options. You can either select wall function or full resolution. Wall function is typically less accurate, but has less stringent mesh requirements and will typically be a lighter weight simulation. This is our default. If, on the other hand, you want to push accuracy, you can select the full resolution. The only factor to consider here is that you need to make sure your mesh is fine enough next to the walls. The best way to do this is by tracking your Y plus, which you can find in your results control under field calculations, turbulence. This will print out your Y plus as a field in the post processor once your simulation is complete. It is important that if you were using full resolution, your Y plus falls beneath one amongst all the surfaces. In order to do so, you're typically going to have to apply certain mesh refinements, namely inflating your boundary layers. You can see more about this in our meshing tutorial. Thank you for attending this SimScale tutorial on turbulence. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.